somebody's pulling up over there. What's up guys? We just got back from five days of fishing Pyramid Lake. Uh, we met up with some friends from BV out there. We had good weather for a couple days. We had still sunny weather a couple days. Um, out there you kind of want the clouds and you want the wind and we had that. Unfortunately the wind was coming from the southwest so it was hitting us in the back and it wasn't really generating the waves that we wanted. Uh, but it did make for some bomber hero casts so that was a lot of fun. Um, everyone in the group caught fish, caught multiple fish, uh, so it was a success. I think our most productive flies were probably small midges, um, black in particular. And if you watched my last video, it was a fly tying video called the Midnight Midge. That's a pattern I came up with before the trip last year that caught me a lot of fish. So I replicated it this year, did more of those. And some of the guys uh, that we met up with this year were the guys I went with last year. So they had that intel about that black midge. So they all brought a bunch as well. And that seemed to be the most productive fly of the trip. So if you haven't watched that video, go check it out. Like I said, good weather most of the trip for fishing, but there was a couple still days. Uh, one of those days we decided to utilize to go into town instead of fishing and we refueled, got some more water, uh, stopped into the bar at Pyramid Lake Lodge where we met Roxanne, the bartender, and she had told us she'd been having a lot of success stripping leeches in the evenings or the afternoons, um, purple leeches in particular. She even gave me a little bit of fly tying material that uh, I was able to whip some up lakeside with, so thanks for that. Uh, and we went home after that little session at the bar and uh, we went home, I, we went back to the lake, we went back to our camp spot and uh, Morgan fished and stripped a purple leech and caught the only fish of the day doing that. So that was a little skunk saver there. So shout out Roxanne on that insider uh, tip there. I guess this was my second time out there, Morgan's first time out there, uh, totally DIY. So we're kind of learning as we go as well. But we did figure out a few helpful tips this trip and some stuff that we want to share with you. So Morgan can kind of fill you in on that. Yeah, so like Tanner said, it was my first time and we brought a switch rod to use. And that was a new experience for me. That's, I mean, a cast that's similar to the roll cast, but you are using two hands. So... I think if I could go back in time, I probably would have practiced a little more beforehand, but I was able to figure it out, get my line out where the fish were, so that was awesome. I will say when you are casting a switch rod, you have a lot more line out and your line's a lot further away from you, which means it's going to take a lot more time to get tension on a fish when they eat. So I lost a few fish just from not getting tension fast enough. So I was focused on trying to get off my ladder, get to the beach so I could bring the fish in and lost it because a lot of times these fish also would run at you, which I thought was interesting. So another opportunity for them to get slack in the line and get off. And <laughs> that was a little bit challenging. We also had a pretty small net. So I would say in the future, we'd definitely bring a bigger net than what you would typically use for trout fishing. Um, these are mega trout. So we lost a few just from slipping out of the net. It happens, but probably could have been avoided. We also started putting rocks on our ladders. Uh, Tanner mentioned the wind. There were a few days that it was so strong, it literally knocked us off our ladders. Um, and so if you're not standing on your ladder, then that's also liable to blow over. So. We would bring a big rock off of the beach and just set it on top of the ladder and that kind of helped keep it planted. Um, and then lastly, I would just say tie anything down that you care about because the wind will pick up out of nowhere. And one of our buddies had a very unfortunate incident on the last day involving his entire bag getting blown into the lake. like immediately and he lost three rods three reels and his cell phone so could have definitely been avoided but uh those are just probably some of my initial hot takes on the trip but it's an amazing place um just the views the 
weather you can see moving across. It's just kind of a surreal place. So I really, really enjoyed my time out there. Yeah, so Pyramid Lake is one of those places that if you don't have your flies in the water, you're not catching fish. Um, and a bite can literally come at any time of the day. We watched, you know, when we were sitting on the beach taking a lunch break, watched a buddy walk over, ask if he could cast my rod. First cast catches a fish on it, you know, when we thought it was completely dead at that time. So it just goes to show keeping those flies in the water, you always have a chance. Uh, which makes it hard to want to pull out the camera and film. So we didn't get a whole lot of footage, but we did piece together something for you guys to watch. So uh, yeah, we'll roll the tape. Enjoy. fishing. that one. Oh. Sorry, babe. Did it break up on me? Buddy. 
Y'all see that? There on the YouTube world. Whoa. <laughs> oh, he went back to the blackie for a good reason. Everyone fishing the black mid. Come on. Yeah, I didn't get the fucking bobber down, but everything after. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> nice, nice, dude. Good timing. Saying goodbye to this beautiful lake. <laughs>